So hello, Tuesday evening Nourish Yoga with Life Cycles Yoga, nourishing ourselves this Tuesday night with some vinyasa and some yin. So we have a yin yang going on, finding that balance. Um, yeah, it's Gemini season. So all the life cycle students should have received their Gemini reports today. I was going to get them out this weekend, but I um, was resting quite a bit and I didn't want to use my brain. So thank you so much for that patience. Got them out this morning. Um, Gemini season invites in a new moon for Gemini on uh, this coming Memorial Day, May 30th. And then there's a full moon in Sagittarius on June 13th. So the reports show where the sun is warming and nourishing your particular house of Gemini. And then also where the new moon is happening and then where the full moon is happening in your chart, new beginnings and also endings. So just a part of this um, life cycle that we're going through, and Tanya in here. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to explore Gemini all until June 20th, actually, so, because that's when the, no, sun, she, the sun will move into Cancer on June 21st. Hey, Tanya. Uh, and that's when summer starts. So we're actually in the last month of spring. So the last month of springtime. And that ushers in a lot of feelings, too, of the renewal of growth and spring. You know, where are we moving into towards summer? What's your intention? So thinking about your intentions for um, Gemini season, you know, um, writing your new mantra on the whiteboard or um, on your whiteboard or maybe on your mirror or something. But Gemini is very curious, very interested in the details, it likes books, it likes information, it loves memes, it's very witty. Um, you know, information, curious, uh, it, um, what else can I say, rules the shoulders, it's an air sign, and it rules the third house, so communication, and it rules the thinking mind, so thinking, thinking, thinking all the time. If you have a Gemini sun, Gemini moon, Gemini rising, um, you may know this feeling of the monkey mind not being able to turn it off. It can be a little bit more excessive um, for Gemini moon rising and sun and, and Mercury as well, if you have Mercury and Gemini. Um, it just is on a continuous loop um, because Mercury rules it. Not that not everybody else has a monkey mind, they do, I know that, but it's uh, a lot stronger in those Mercury-led signs. Virgo as well, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. All right, and so, yeah, just feeling all the feels this week. We have a big, big week. I just cannot believe how literal astrology can be sometimes. And um, in light of today's events, I know some of you didn't know what was going on, um, but I heard as the kids were coming home from school that, there was a major shooting in Texas at an elementary school where 14 kids were killed and a teacher. Yet again, we have violence. And speaking of literal, today the moon moved into Aries, Mars moved into Aries, and Jupiter is in Aries. Um, and so this is intense because, and also Venus, um, is moving into Aries on Saturday, but uh, this is really intense because Aries is the sign of I am. So it wants to express itself like I am here. It's the first sign of the Zodiac. So it's like a baby being born, right? And usually babies will cry on their way out and be like, I'm here, I'm expressing myself. Um, it's ruled by Mars. And so Mars into Aries or yeah, Mars into Aries, it's in its home base. So it feels like it's at home, but it's also kind of like an explosion because Mars is the planet of war, of anger, of frustration. It's also an initiatory energy. It, it controls our energy within our body and our sexual energy within our body. And so when we have Mars and Aries, we can see things happen like this, like the starts of wars, but also like a shooting, like I am important. Everybody look at me. I'm going to kill people because I think I'm important. All the emphasis is turned inward and on also bad things happen when Mars goes into Aries. And, and what happens with Jupiter and Aries? Expansion. Jupiter expands. Jupiter makes things bigger. So it's big. And what's the moon? The moon is our emotional self. I mean, that's Aries is our, um, or the moon is our emotional self, how we feel. So Aries gives us feelings of passion and action and leadership and courage. 
right? So all of those today just really added up and how literal astrology can be. And not that I'm trying to downplay it. I'm just trying to connect, you know, cycles. So um, horrifying, actually horrifying. So, I mean, I almost thought about canceling tonight because it's just like, I don't even know. I think about those kids, you know, being so excited for summer break and just my own kids as a parent and how disgusting and sickening and maddening it is that we can have people in the government still proclaim that their right to life, but allow children to be murdered by guns. So there's no legislation, but they'd rather kill, you know, have children killed outside of the womb versus in, and they're just trying to regulate everything. Sorry, going on a rant, but Republicans are astoundingly hypocrisy, just the hypocrisy of it all. All of us have to be fucking over it, okay? And we have to make change. So boom, there's my Aries, right? Okay, coming out. I mean, brave and courage to make a goddamn change in this country because this is just going to keep happening. So, all right. Well, yeah, okay, thank you, Tanya. Getting off my soapbox, let's move. I am not one for anger, trust me. Like I'm an earth sign through and through, so much earth. But when you make me angry and when you make a mama very angry, like it's time for change, like. I'm over it, super over it. Um, time to get angry. So, all right. Um, and we can channel that anger, right? Like Mars and Aries is about channeling that feeling of passion. So channeling anger, like where are you channeling it towards, right? Not buying a gun and shooting people, but rather putting it into your passion of like, how do I utilize this in my passion, my purpose in life? How do I utilize this to make a stronger, more courageous move for the positive? Um, yeah, and I'm percolating that, percolating that. And yeah, anyway, so um, Gemini, let's get started with some movement here. And we're going to do a cooling breath. So Gemini rules the shoulders, the arms, and the hands, but it also rules the lungs. So lungs, any pranayama is good, right? For the lungs, strengthening your lungs. And I, I was planning, um, I mean, for Gemini, you can do anything really, um, because it's the lungs and air and, and, and as an air sign circulation. So the other air signs are Aquarius and Libra. Okay. All about balance, social fairness, information, um, and detachment from certain emotions, of course. So detachment. All right, so we're going to do a uh, shatali breath, which is a cooling breath, and it's a reversal of the breath. So this is really kind of a good breath if you're feeling hot headed, if you're feeling hot in the summer too, if you're just temperature wise, really hot. So it's good for cooling you off. All right. So for shatali breath, we're going to I'm going to show you here because I'm close to the camera, but we're going to inhale through the mouth over the tongue and then exhale through the nose. So we're reversing it, right? Usually we'll inhale through the nose, exhale mouth, but we're inhaling over the tongue and exhale through the nose. This is going to make you thirsty. So if you don't have something to drink, go grab it real quick. Okay. And holding the tongue, you can. Okay. So how they describe it in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika is that you hold it like a straw like a straw. So the, so the air goes through, but not everybody can do that. And that's okay. You can have a flat tongue, just having a flat tongue and bring the air over. So it's kind of like a swamp cooler or, um, you know, like an air conditioner cools you down. So you can do the straw or the flat tongue and just bring the breath through and then exhale through the mouth. All right. So let's get cooled off y'all. Oh, Okay, come into a comfortable seat. I am sitting on my bolster. I love to raise my hips above my knees. It helps tilt the pelvis forward when you sit on a block or a blanket or a pillow. It tips your pelvis forward and elongates the spine upward. Crown of the head goes towards the ceiling. Relax your hands, relax your arms. And just take a moment, a few breaths, just to center yourself. Be aware of your energy, be aware of your emotions and your physical body on your mat right now. Maybe close down your eyes if you want to turn inward. And take a few breaths, just a few basic breaths. Good. All right, so for Chitali breath, this is a cooling breath. It's um, 
So we inhale through the mouth. You can do the straw or just the flat tongue. And then close the mouth and exhale through the nose. So it's like bringing the air in over the tongue and then exhaling all of that um, hot air through the nose. Everything that's built up, cooling breath down into the lungs and then pushing the breath through the nose, the heated breath. You know, that pent up anger and frustration and heat within the body. All right. Okay, so we'll do three of these together and then I'll let you go out on your own to try a few by yourself. Okay, inhale through the mouth. Close the mouth, exhale nose. Inhale through the mouth. Close the mouth, exhale nose. One more, inhale through the nose or through the mouth. Exhale through the nose. All right, we're going to do um, six of those on our own. And then when you're done with your six, just relax the hands down, come back to your basic breath. You can count out your breaths on your hands. All right, go ahead. Good, and when you're done, just come back to a basic inhale and exhale. Notice again how you feel. Let your shoulders fall away from your ears. Good. If you wanna keep your eyes closed, that's okay too. Bring your hands together and just find some heat here. Some nice heat within the hands. We're gonna place our palms over our eyes. If you have glasses, you can put them on your, um, on your leg real quick. We just do this just to give our eyes a little eye bath today. There's a lot of emphasis on the head right now because Aries rules the head, okay? Good, nice warm palms. Let's place the palms softly over our eyes, give them a little hot tub. And notice if you see any shapes or colors. If you see any colors, I'd love to hear at the end because it connects with the chakra that's resonating with you the most right now. Good, remove the hands. And then softly flutter open the eyes, allowing some light to pour in. And then inhale, fingertips to the sky. Exhale, release the hands to the sides, drop your shoulders. Inhale, hands to the sky. And exhale, release the hands to the sides. One more time, inhale, hands up high. And exhale, release the hands. And then let's just find some movement in the shoulders, big circles backwards or forwards. I'll tell you when to switch. Good, and release, come forward. Good, and release, good job. Okay, so I'm gonna remove my bolster. If you're sitting on something really ooh, high, go ahead and remove that bolster. Good, all right. And um, first thing we're gonna do is let's come into tabletop and find some movement. Just notice how you feel, lay upper body, lower body, make some little movement here, natural movement that feels good for you. Shaking the hips, shaking the shoulders, shaking the head. Good. All right, coming back into a neutral tabletop. Flip those toes under, inhale here. And exhale, bring the hips back towards the heels. Open up the bottom of your feet, open up the toes. Notice where there's the most tension. Is it the toes? 
or maybe the arch or maybe the heels. Good. Release, inhale, back to tabletop. Exhale, down dog. Let's bring those hips up high, look back at the yogi toes, let your head hang and shake it out. Good. Okay, now inhale, look forward on your mat, look at your hands. And when you inhale, I want you to just press into the hands and lift the shoulders up, really subtle. And then exhale, let your shoulders glide back down. It's very subtle, it's maybe like an inch. Inhale, press. Exhale, release. It's like a mini push up just through the shoulders. One more time. Inhale, press. Exhale, release. And let the knees come back down. Let's walk the hands back towards the knees and untuck the toes. So bring the tops of the feet to the mat and inhale here. And exhale, allow your hips to come back towards the heels. Just counter stretch our little toe stretch there. Arch and toes. Good. And release, come back up to tabletop and inhale cat or cow, drop the belly, lift the gaze, flip the toes. And exhale cat, arch the back. Inhale cow. And exhale cat. Inhale cow. And exhale cat. Good job. Inhale, allow a neutral spine here. Let's drop down onto our forearms and clasp our fingers. Bring that little left toe back out behind you. Straighten the left leg. Yeah, you know, calf stretch. Press the heel there. Good job. Press that heel back. Open up the calf. So I got these new rad roller balls. You guys are so cool. I have to show them to you. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, I uh, using them for myofascial release. So I'm going to show them to you guys. Highly recommend. All right, release. Let's lift up that left leg and inhale here, nice and straight through the left leg. And exhale, bring that left knee up towards your left arm. Bend it, good. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend up to the arm. <sighs> inhale, extend. Exhale, one more time. Good, now leave it there by the left arm and then lift the leg up and down. Kind of like a dog, <laughs> you know, hydrant. One more time, lift up and down. Good job. All right, walk the hands. Come back up onto your hands before we move to the other side. Spread the fingertips out wide. Inhale, look forward. Flip the toes under. And exhale, down dog. Hips up high. Good. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, heels down. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, lower the knees back down to the mat. Nice and slow. Good job. All right, let's come back down under the forearms, clasp the fingers again, and extend the right leg this time. Right toes are on the mat, right heel back, open up the calf. Good, and release. Let's lift up that right leg, inhale here. Exhale, bend the knee, bring it up forward towards the shoulder. Inhale, extend, straighten. Exhale, bend the knee, bring it up towards the shoulder. Inhale, straighten one more time. And exhale, bend towards the shoulder. All right, now we're just gonna lift that bent knee up and down, up and down. One more time, up, and then bring the knee all the way back down. Good job. Keep the forearms on the mat, hands are clasped. Flip the toes under, inhale. And exhale, dolphin, lift the hips up high. Look back at those yogi toes. And then we're gonna do three shoulder push-ups again. Inhale, press through the forearms. Feel your shoulders lift. Exhale, release down. Inhale, press, very subtle. Exhale, release. Inhale, press, one more time. Exhale, release, good job. Drop the knees down, come into a resting pose, child's pose or puppy pose, your choice. Take a few breaths here. So thinking about your bigger intention for 2022, how do you apply a Gemini micro intention to that? So Gemini, right? Information, teaching, sharing, thinking, communicating, networking. Um, and, oh yeah, mantras that I'm using is I am curious and I am able to focus. 
Geminis are notorious for intense distractions that's going on. So focus is one thing to um, focus on. <laughs> All right, one more breath here in your resting pose. Good, come on back up to tabletop. We are going to inhale, flip those toes under and exhale, down dog, lift the hips up high. Inhale, look forward on the mat. And exhale, tip your toe, top of the mat to fold. Find your forward fold. Good. Inhale, half lift. And exhale to fold. Bend your knees slightly. Inhale, lift the chest. Lift the fingertips high. And exhale, just bend that right arm. Bring the hand to the back of the head. Grab your right elbow. Good. Yeah. And inhale, fingertips high. And exhale, bend that left elbow, bring the left hand to the back of the head or the neck, hold on to that left elbow. Good, and release, inhale, fingertips high. Exhale, and fold. <sighs> inhale, half lift. Exhale to fold. Step that left foot back. And you may want your blocks here, so. Grab your blocks, I'm gonna grab mine. Bring one block to the inside of that right foot. Left hand comes to the floor or the block. Left heel is down, so the right knee is bent. So it's like a warrior one foot position. Place your right hand on your right knee. Gaze is down, inhale here. Exhale, let the hips sink a little bit further. Good. One more breath here. Exhale. Now start to turn and gaze over the right leg, lifting the right arm to the sky. Wiggle those fingers, inhale here and extend. And exhale, drop that right hand back down. Let's drop that left knee down and untuck the toes. Let's move our left block forward. We're just gonna press our hips forward. Right hand on the right knee. Left hand on the mat or the black. Good. One more breath. Flip those toes under. Inhale. Let's lift up that left leg. And we're going to straighten the right leg. Bring the left foot forward for pyramid pose. So both legs are straight. Left hand is still on the block. Lots of movement with that left leg. Feeling into the hamstring right side. Good, one more breath. Okay, now let's just move our block to this side just in case we need it and start to inhale, lifting the heart, lifting the hands high and exhale, drop the hands to the side. We're gonna step our left foot forward into standing stop. So the left knee is bent, good. Start to flex those left toes. Nice, inhale, fingertips to the sky. And exhale, twist to the left. So our right hand comes to our left knee and our left hand may extend out behind us. Slowly working on that balance with a twist. Good job. Return back forward, drop the left leg. Inhale, fingertips to the sky. And exhale to fold. <sighs> Inhale, half lift. And exhale to fold. Let's switch it out to the other side. This time we step our right foot back. And let's take a block underneath our right hand or bring the right hand to the mat. Left knee is over the left ankle. So bring the left hand to the left knee. We're just finding our foundation here. Warrior one legs, breathe into it. Deep inhale. And then exhale, let the hips come down a little bit further. Good. And breathe. Good, inhale, look over the left leg and start to lift that left fingertips to the sky. Wiggle the fingertips. Good, one more breath. 
and exhale, bring the left hand to the left knee. Now let's drop our left knee or right knee to the mat. Untuck your right toes and start to press your hips forward. The right hand stays on the mat or on the block. Good. Inhale, lift those hips back up. Flip the right toes under and lift the right knee. We're gonna come in a pyramid, so step the right foot forward a little bit, close the gap, straighten both legs. Bending at the waist, allowing the spine to fold forward. Just experiencing that sensation of emptying out. Today's Tuesday, letting go of the week. Just coming into this sense of stillness on your mat, in your practice. This sense of presence with what you're feeling right now. Good, bad, and the ugly, right? All right. So from here, we're just gonna move our block to the side to be safe and start to bend into the knees a little bit to lift the chest. Good, and extend the fingertips to the sky. One line of energy, inhale here. And exhale, drop the hands, kind of like mountain pose, opening the palms to the front of the mat. And step the right foot forward, balance on the left, standing staff. So balance on the left, right knee is bent and lifted. Flex the right toes. Inhale, hands up high. And exhale, twist to the right. So grab that knee with the left hand. Allow the right arm to come behind you. One more breath. Good, on release. Come back forward, drop your leg. Inhale, hands up high. Exhale, on release. Maybe a swan dive forward. Forward fold. Good. Take a moment in this fold for one deep breath. And exhale. Bend your hands, let's step back into plank. Good. Deep inhale here. Exhale, lower the knees down, then lower the chest. Inhale, baby cobra, lift the heart. And exhale, release. Now extend the arms behind you, kind of like a Superman pose. And this time, inhale, lift lower legs below the knees and your heart. Exhale, release. One more time, we'll lift the legs and the heart, Superman. And release. Good job, hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale, tabletop. And exhale, let's come back down into child's pose just for a moment here, catch your breath. Connect with our mantra. Maybe you don't have one yet. For me, it's definitely, <laughs> I am able to focus, I am able to focus. And I know it's hard during Gemini season because it's like, ooh, shiny object. What's this meme? Oh, what's this website? And then you find yourself in a rabbit hole. Because Gemini loves information. Good. All right, come back into tabletop. Flip those toes under. Inhale, look forward. And exhale, hips up high. Good, down dog. Shake the hips, shake the shoulders. Good, bringing any sort of awareness to the sensation in your back, the belly. Good, coming back into a neutral down dog. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, heels down. Inhale, look forward on the mat. Let's step our right foot forward and drop your left heel. Grab your block underneath that left hand, right hand on the right knee. Inhale here. Exhale, let your hips settle a little bit more. Maybe widen the foot a little bit closer to the edge of the mat. And then inhale, bring the gaze to the side, looking to the right, and lift up that right arm. Good, inhale here. And exhale, bring that right hand back down. Let's drop the left knee down to the mat, right hand on that right knee, and untuck the left toes. Inhale here, 
Exhale, press the hips forward, all with that left hand on the mat or a block. Good. Inhale, hips back up. And bring that right hand back up. A modified version of what we just did. And exhale, bring the right hand back down to the right knee. Flip those left toes under. And inhale, lift the hips. Step the left leg forward, pyramid pose. Close the gap, straight legs. Bending at the waist. Good. Inhale, half lift, straight spine. And exhale, fold a little bit deeper and let your head hang. Just notice your awareness around your breath. Notice if your temperature changed. Temperature in terms of your physical body or also your emotional self. Good. Inhale, look forward on the mat. Let's just bring our block to this side and bend our knees slightly. Lift our chest, lift our fingers hips high. Exhale, drop the hands to the sides. Good, shine those palms forward. Balance in the right leg, lift the left. Woo. Into standing stack, flex the toes. Inhale, hands up high. Exhale, twist to the left. Good, left arm behind you. On release, shake it out. Inhale, hands up high. Exhale, unfold. Plant your hands, step back into a plank position. Bring the right hand to the center of the mat. Inhale, plank, left arm goes up. You can always use a kickstand, the right knee down, if you like. One breath. Exhale, drop that left hand back down. Come back into plank or tabletop. Inhale. Exhale, lower the knees, lower the chest. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, release. Airplane arms behind you. Inhale, Superman. Lift the heart, lift the feet. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift, Superman. Exhale, release. Good job. Hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale, tabletop. And exhale, down dog. Inhale, heels up high. Exhale, heels down. Inhale, look forward on the mat. Exhale, bring that left foot forward on the mat. Drop the right foot or heel. Grab your block if you're using one inside of the right or left foot. Good. Left hand comes to the left knee, inhale here. Exhale, let your hips sink a little bit further, maybe toe, heel that left foot out a little bit further to the edge of the mat. Deep breaths. Inhale, look over the left shoulder, lifting the left hand to the sky. And release, bring that left hand back down to the knee, drop your right knee, untuck the toes. Inhale here. Exhale, press the hips forward. Good. One more breath here. Now lift the hips back up. Modified version of what we just did. Keep your right hand on the block. Inhale, look to the left. Lift the left hand to the sky. And release, bring that left hand back down. Flip the right toes under. We're gonna lift up our right knee. Step the right foot forward. Pyramid pose, straighten both of your legs. Still using that block, which is nice. And then inhale, halfway lift. So straight spine, just creating some space and length. And exhale to fold. Good. Let your head hang. One more breath. Good, now let's put our block to the side. Bend your knees slightly. Inhale, start to lift the heart. Lift both hands to the sky. And exhale, remove the hands to the side. Shine your palms forward. Good, all right, on your inhale, find the balance in the left leg. Step your right foot forward for standing staff. 
Trick is find that focal point. Flex those toes, inhale fingertips to the sky. And exhale, twist to the right, left hand on the knee, right hand back. It's okay to fall and come back. It's okay to use a wall or a chair to your practice. Good, and release, come back center, drop, shake it out. Good job. All right, inhale, hands up high. Exhale, pull down what you need tonight. Is it a hug? Is it some love? Mm, I know that I needed my community, so thank you so much for being here today. And fold. Let's plant those hands and step back into a plank position. This time, plank on the other side. Left hand comes to the center of the mat. Feel free to drop your left knee down. Right hand comes up to the sky. And breathe. Good, and release. Right hand comes back down, tabletop or plank, deep and hop. Exhale, lower your knees, lower your chest down. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, release. Extend the hands behind you, Superman. Inhale, lift the heart, lift the feet. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift again. Exhale, release. Good, hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale, table top. And exhale, child's pose or puppy pose. Take a moment to recenter or grab some water. All right, good. So, because there's a lot of emphasis right now on the shoulders, arms and hands, I wanted to do broken wing. Um, yeah, so let's do broken wing. Or actually, you know what, let's do Malasana first. I wanted to do, because when we're on broken wing, we can just flip over on our back and do Shavasana. So, um, malasana with a support. So malasana opens up the hips and the groin, but it also connects with the meridian points of the lungs on the outsides of the arms. And the lungs actually are where we store grief and sadness. So I just want to make sure that we have some opening there to allow it, if whatever you're feeling, right? um today's events or things going on in your life it's a really nice place to allow the life force to flow through and not get stagnant so malasana yeah malasana is a yogic squat and i have my bolster here you have a bolster or even if you have a little stool some people like to use a little stool you can also add a block to lift it up a little bit because malasana is also very tight on the knees okay so make yourself a little seat. Unless you want to go full blown in the malasana, do it. You know, this is your body, your choice. I am highly attuned to that, telling everybody your body, your choice. All right. So we have our knees bent, and then we bring our hands into a prayer position at the front of the heart center. We're pressing our elbows, so the outsides of our elbows, into our knees. Okay. So kind of find what feels good for you. I'm going to remove my block. It's a little bit too high for me because I want to feel it in my hips. If you're feeling too much in those knees, get those hips lifted up. You can even add a bunch of pillows. You can even just sit in a chair for this and just press your elbows into your knees. That's fine too. So. Once you find your position, let's just breathe for a moment, closing down the eyes, pressing the elbows into the insides of the knees. New breaths here. So yin helps us slow down from that yang in action. Yin is the feminine side and yang is considered the masculine side. And yin helps us just nourish and nurture our bodies, um, particularly going into um joints so just imagine yourself opening joints in order to allow the connective tissue to release 
allowing tendons and ligaments to elongate. And that's oftentimes in that connective tissue is where we hold the pain. So in Malasana, you want to have a nice straight back. If you find yourself curving forward, like in a cat position, imagine your shoulders falling or shoulder blades pressing back towards your spine and your heart shining forward. Taking some deep breaths. Just about 15 more seconds. Notice where the tension is. Just send some loving kindness there. Good. And as we slowly start to transition out of this pose, you can, um, you know, any which way that feels safe and comfortable for you. I'm just rela releasing my hands and I'm gonna release my legs forward because I'm sitting on my bolster and just shake it out wherever you're at. Good. Okay. And then let's find ourselves on our backs. So I'm gonna explain, you can keep your bolster nearby. If you're getting chilly, feel free to grab your socks. So there's a lot of different ways to do broken wing. And this one is going to um, open up our arm in a different kind of way. So um, we're going to be laying on our backs. And when we're laying on our backs, we're going to take our arm and place the top of our hand on our lower back. So the palm of our hand is touching the floor. So it kind of looks like this, and we're laying on our arm, okay? This really opens up the front of the shoulder, the front of the chest. That can be really intense though. So just listen in to like what your body is feeling. If it's too intense, you can take it out and just let it rest to your side, okay? I'm also gonna bring my blanket up to my head. Just gonna have a look, nice pillow. Um, all right, so coming on to my back, I take my hand and I have my knees bent for now because I want to lift my hips up. Um, I take my hand and my palm is going to touch the mat. The top of my hand comes to my lower back. Okay, so you can keep the hand at the lower back and straighten the, arm, the legs. If you want it more intense, though, keep bending the elbow and move the hand up the spine. That will open it up even more. So the elbow bends and the hand can move up the spine. Just notice how that feels. The other hand can just rest. Notice how you move your hand from the lower back or up the spine a little bit more. For broken wing. So in yin, um, we don't want pain, right? In yoga, we do not want pain, extreme pain, but we do feel into the discomfort, right? There will be attention. There will be discomfort. And especially in yin, as we breathe, so use the breath 
just start releasing the layers. Notice what's coming up. Again, this deeply connects into those lung meridian lines. That holds our grief and our sadness. Deep breaths. Start to notice how the shoulder releases, the arm. Any sensations? All right, start to bend the knees really slowly. And what you wanna do is press into the feet. Yeah, lift up like bridge to remove the hand, remove the arm. Good, and allow the palm to shine up towards the sky. Good. And just tick tock the legs back and forth and maybe move the palms up and down. So like place them towards the floor and then let them shine to the ceiling. Just notice how your right shoulder feels different than the left shoulder, okay? All right, let's move into the other arm. So pressing into the feet and allowing the hips to come up. Again, the palm is facing towards the floor. The back of the hand is on the back. So lower back, mid back or upper back, just notice how far you can go up, what feels good. And the shoulder could feel different than the other shoulder. Yeah, it could feel different. So find sort of your edge. Again, don't find your extreme pain, find your edge that feels uncomfortable. And then start to breathe. Breathe into that shoulder, breathe into your wing. Straightening your legs down. Trust that it will release. Trust that it will release.
Allow your breath to ease and release. Notice any sensations throughout the shoulder. All right, start to bend the knees so that you can lift the hips and slowly start to bring the arm out. Flip the palm to face up towards the sky. And then make any movements, maybe tick tock the knees, maybe roll the wrists. And from here, we're just coming straight into Shavasana. So if you want to grab your bolster or something for underneath your knees or blanket. You get comfortable for you. Tucking the shoulder blades in towards the spine, lifting the chin, just breathe. I just want to take this moment in Shavasana just to recognize, you know, all those families right now that are going through some deep heartache in Texas for their children and their loved ones. Taking a moment here in our silence and our resting pose to acknowledge that. And sending them some love and healing and support because they're going to need it.
Starting to bring your awareness back to your physical body. Deepening the breath and allowing it to roll down through the arms into the fingertips. Deepening your breath and allowing it to roll through your hips, your legs, and into your toe tips. Feel free to stay where you are, just to roll over softly to the side, resting your head on your arm. Into the fetal pose, this new beginning pose. Calling in your mantra for Gemini season. Pressing up into a seated position if it calls to you. Bringing our hands over our hearts, one on top of the other, feeling this pulse of your heart, your love, and your compassion. Utilizing this energy within you to channel it for the good. I'm so grateful to be able to come with together with all of you in community tonight. And also in love. From my heart to all of yours, namaste. So dear friends, I also want to mention that we have our first Gemini birthday coming up tomorrow. Mona will be celebrating her birthday. So happy birthday, Mona. We are so happy that you are part of this group of our friendship and our community. So thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Love you.